Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, may you know that the fragrant offering of Christ's sacrifice on the cross was the all-availing price that was paid for your sins. May this be your comfort now and always. And may God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. Amen. Today as we celebrate LWML, Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday, we think about the many tens of thousands of women who have offered their, uh, uh, given of their time, their talents, and their treasures to share the gospel, to proclaim God's word. Since 1942 and its inception, women have been going out to share God's word. They've been collecting those mighty mites that Miss Barbara talked about last time. Nearly $2 million this year will be going out to share God's word. In fact, from things as such as comfort dogs for, the P- for soldiers suffering from PTSD, to children over in Nigeria who are receiving God's word for the first time in illustrated Bibles in their own language, the Kumba language. LWML has been supporting these ministries, these outreaches, and many others. And we know that as we think about that inception in 1942, over 70 years ago, that many women throughout history have been giving of their time, their talents, and their treasures to ensure that God's word is proclaimed, to share the gospel message. And not just many women, but many Christians. Today as we come together to celebrate LWML Sunday, we not only celebrate the missionary work that they are doing, but God's mission for each of us to share his gospel message. God's mission for each of us to proclaim his word, to live out his word in our lives. Now it's interesting that Paul uses this language to talk about the fragrant offering and sacrifice of Christ. A sweet smell to him. Especially interesting when we think about where he wrote the words of this epistle, these words. He wrote him in a jail cell. Now I'm not talking about when he was under house arrest in Rome, but when he was later moved to Mamertine prison. Now I've shared with some of you before what Mamertine prison was like, but just as a reminder, Mamertine prison started out as a cistern that was dug in the 7th century B.C., a hole in the ground for storing water. When Rome took over, they made it a prison. Paul and many other prisoners, including St. Peter, were lowered into this prison through a hole in the ground. There was not a great deal of light. There may have been some flowing water, but not a lot of air. They had to get rid of their waste, probably by burying it. So quite interesting when we think that Paul, even amidst the fragrances he was smelling, had that sweet smell of salvation on his heart and in his mind. Paul shared the words of the gospel, words of hope, even from that hole in the ground. Paul shared those words of hope with these people who he knew would need it. Because as he wrote to the church in Ephesus, he knew that they were already going to be under persecution. This church in Ephesus, as soon as 60 AD, which is about when he wrote this letter, as soon as Nero, the emperor, took the throne, persecution was amped up against Christians. But truly, if you read the letter, the short letter to the Ephesians, you'll discover that it's more about those who are attacking the church from the inside than those on the outside. In fact, there was a group called the Judaizers. Now, this is a a word that Paul coined himself in Galatians chapter 2, verse 14, which in Galatians, he responds to these Judaizers. But here in Ephesians and also in the book of Colossians, he rebuts them. Now, these Judaizers, they believed... That, it was not, that salvation was not only by faith in Christ alone, but also by traditions. See, these Jewish converts had been Jews their whole lives. They'd learned the Torah faithfully. They'd learned about circumcision and about the need for honoring the feast before, the God, before God. They had learned that they should only eat certain things. And they wanted to push that same beliefs on other Christians, other believers. Paul didn't have a problem so much with the traditions, but more with the fact that those traditions were being treated as part of salvation. So he writes in response to these Judaizers, in one of the most firm gospel statements that many of you know by heart, just three chapters earlier than our epistle for today. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man may boast. By grace, through faith, we are saved. 
such a simple phrase, such simple words, things, words that we should be able to impress on our hearts. But how often we struggle with those words. How often we struggle to see as though there may be another way, as there may be something we must contribute to it. We're not necessarily Judaizers. But how many of us consider our own works? Consider the way that we live our own lives. And we think about whether we're pretty good people, certainly better than others. As Paul wrote this letter, he wanted to make sure that we knew it was not about our works in any way, shape, or form. But it was about God working through each one of us. It was about that fragrant offering. And that is why he wrote that we are imitators of Christ. We are those who follow his example. Now he refers to Christ as that sweet-smelling incense. And he certainly knew his audience well. Maybe not all of you recognize what Paul was doing here. He was connecting this back to the Old Testament teachings. He was connecting that sacrifice of Christ back to well, practice that God had instituted back in the Exodus. See, God had commanded the people not only to offer sin offerings, but they had a separate altar that they used just for prayer. And in the morning, they would burn, the, the priest would go to that altar and he would burn incense. And in the evening, again, the priest would go to the altar and burn incense so that all day and all night, theoretically, the smoke of the incense would burn before God as a sweet-smelling offering. In fact, David gives us Sets, these, sets this imagery into motion as he refers to it as our prayers. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up my hands as the evening sacrifice. See, David understood, as we should understand, that as we lift up prayers before the Lord, although we don't see them, those prayers come before God as sweet-smelling incense. Those prayers lifted before Him are the fragrance that he reaches His nose, not of our putrid sinfulness, but rather as imitators of his son, the sweet smell of forgiveness. And Paul wanted us to connect with that. It's interesting because so often when we think about the gospel, we think about the fact that we hear it, it's an auditory. We think about the fact that we can see it, it's visual. But how often do we connect the gospel with our olfactory, with our sense of smell? Here God wanted us to realize, Paul again reinforcing God's teaching in Exodus, that the gospel message is meant to be every part of our lives. That we, it is meant to be not only the things that, that, we can, that, that we can see or the things that we can hear, but the things that we can taste and touch as in the Lord's Supper. The things that we can smell as sweet-smelling incense before the Lord. So often we get caught up in what we can see and what we can hear. And we don't realize the many beautiful ways that God also connects with us, with our other senses, our sense of touch, our sense of taste. How often do we take for granted the Lord's Supper, which we come to His table, where we touch His body and blood, where we taste and see the sweetness of His forgiveness. That is the gift of our God here. The gift that He gives to us for each and every day. But now as we think about that, it's easy to cheapen that gift. And it's easy to take that gift for granted. It's easy to get comfortable and used to that gift and to not value all that it is to say that Jesus is our sacrifice. But when we think about our own lives, when we look at our own hearts, we realize that we come before God not smelling sweet like a rose, but putrid like manure. We come, come before God not smelling sweet as grass fresh mown, but the smell of our sinfulness per permeates. It is only by the forgiveness of Christ that we can come before the Lord, not in that putrid smell, but in that sweet forgiveness. A grace that is meant to be lived grace that is meant to be carried out in our lives. Not cheap grace that says that, well, I'm forgiven so I can do what I want. But grace that says that, that as Christ has given His life for us, that we too shall live as His children. And this is what Paul really gets at in our, gospel, our epistle for today, isn't it? 
He starts out in Ephesians chapter 4. And he starts out in talking about the way that in a practical way, we should give up those sins of our past. The anger, the malice. We should give up the hatred. Our judgmental attitudes. He carries it into our reading for today in Ephesians 5. Giving up the lust of our heart. Our covetous natures. Our sexual immorality. Even idolatry. Paul didn't expect his words just to be heard, filed away for later use. But he expected his words to be lived out. The word of God to be lived out in our hearts and our lives. And isn't that what we celebrate when we celebrate Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday? We don't celebrate great women. We celebrate great women of faith. We celebrate faith of all Christians and the fact that not only did these women, not only do many missionaries around the world hear God's Word, but they also have gone forth from the church, from offering their offerings here and shared those gifts elsewhere, shared God's love elsewhere, shared that message of salvation and forgiveness in their homes, in their communities, around the world. We don't just celebrate people We celebrate people of faith. And that's so important that we do that. That we recognize that. Because although LWML Sunday is not a church holiday, it is a day that we remember the the hard work of God's people. And yes, the hard work that we do as well. Not for our salvation. Because that's been won by faith, by by the grace of Christ Jesus alone. But the works that we do to be imitators of Christ, to walk as children of the light, to share that love with others. And it's not just here when we praise God in in His house on Sunday mornings. It's not just meant for when we put our offerings into the offering plate. It is meant for when we go out to the places God has put us. When we go to our jobs and we are faithful stewards of our time and our energies. When we are in retirement and we use the time of retirement to honor God with what we do and with what we say. Some of you are fathers. Some of you are grandfathers. Some of you are daughters and some of you are granddaughters. When we are faithful children, faithfully part of God's family, doing what a daughter, a son should do, living as a faithful father, a faithful mother. And this has not only eternal consequence, but immediate consequence as well. Think about the way that your actions shape and influence your own children. Think about the way that your actions, the way that you live, set an example for the next generation. Because that is certainly what the Lutheran Women's Missionary League is doing. They are setting an example for the next generation of women who want to give of their time, talents, and treasures as they have historically given of their time, talents, and treasures, given of their energies to honor God. As you think about the way that you live your life, the example you set before God. The example your children see and your grandchildren see. I pray that they see a child of the light. A child who is living out that sweet smell of the offering of Christ Jesus as He gave His life for each one of us. That as you celebrate Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday, that you would celebrate Christians around the world of all time sharing God's Word. That you would not only think about God's gift of salvation in terms of what we hear, what we see, but also what we smell, what we taste, what we touch. Knowing that God has given us a salvation that is beyond what we hear and see, but transcends all understanding. May the peace of God, which is beyond all our hearts and minds, the understanding of our hearts and minds, guard and keep you. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you for giving your life as a sweet-smelling sacrifice for our sinfulness. We thank you that you have washed us and made us clean in our baptism, that we no longer come before you as putrid-smelling, but as those who have been forgiven as sweet-smelling sacrifice. Lord, we pray that each and every day our lives would would be honorable before you, that we would be imitators of you, that we would share your love in what we say and what we do. We thank you, O Lord, for the work and the missions of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. We pray, O Lord, that you would continue to guard them and keep them, that you would guide them each and every day by your Holy Spirit, 
that in their works they would bring honor to you, that the message would be heard, that it is not the works that they do that saves them, but it is by grace through faith. May this be our assurance this day and every day. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen.